Hey everyone, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. Hope you're having a wonderful day. On this video, I'm gonna essentially take you through all of my favorite crafting supplies. Um, I'm gonna tell you where they came from. I'm gonna tell you why I love them so much. Um, most of them are pretty, pretty budget friendly. And most of the, these things I've gotten a ton of questions from you guys about. So let's just jump right in. Uh, if you're joining me on Facebook, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to ask questions. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to do the very same thing. Okay, so I think probably, this is no surprise, my most favorite crafting supply is books books up like this book oh i love this book this was my mamu's she was a school teacher she was my grandmother and it's the new century dictionary and i just love how the pages have sort of yellowed how they have these beautiful illustrations <coughs> and i have used these i have cut these were trapped in a drawer for years and years and years getting absolutely no love or use until I decided to bring them out and start crafting with them. So, this came from my grandmother, but you can find old books at garage sales, at Goodwill, ask a friend, ask your mom, ask your grandma, ask your sister, if they have any old uh, books, any encyclopedias, that kind of thing. Also, I am loving, this was a Reader's Digest, an older Reader's Digest, and I have started using this a lot. I'm, you can see I'm taking it apart page by page. This came from Goodwill. So I love that. And then I love, love, love using vintage sheet music. But it can be brand new. It can be the tuba. It can be from band. It can be the clarinet. It can be the xylophone. It can be piano music. It can be chorus music. Um, it can be music that you even print off of the internet. This happened to come from my local Goodwill. And so I am a treasure hunter. I don't know if you're the same as me. I'm also a super budget conscious kind of a person. I'm frugal. <laughs> um, and I will spend money on things like stencils and good ink and, and chalk paste and gilding and stuff like that. But I like the other things that I use to be super budget friendly. And so sheet mu music is great. Okay, let's put those three things aside. So paper, but you can also use scrapbook paper, craft paper, brown paper bags. There's tons of things that you can use. Okay, then next up, I love using these little wood shapes. They come all different sizes and shapes. Some of them thin. Uh, like at Christmas time, they had the most darling Christmas trees and snowflakes. Some of them chunky like this. Uh, hearts, squares, circles. These all came from my local Dollar Tree. And they were $1 a piece. Okay, so um, you can do, I found that you can do a ton of things with these. Um, and I just think they're a really good base. They don't look like Dollar Tree, in my opinion, once you get them dressed up. Okay, then this is probably also no surprise as well. Hey, everyone joining me. I love this silver. It's called Sterling Extra Fine Glitter from Walmart. It's my all-time favorite. I have used other brands. I've used chunkier glitter, I've used other colors, gold, white, clear. I love this. It's Sue Lin brand extra fine glitter from Walmart and it's around $4. This is my third bottle of it, okay? Um, another thing that I love, I just have a whole pile of stuff here that I'm gonna show you one at a time. And I hope this gives you some ideas because I get a lot of questions about, um, people will say, I don't have the stuff that you have to craft with. Well, you have to develop your own favorites. 
These are just mine, but these may give you some ideas and some of these may be your favorites as well. And maybe I'll be able to give you some suggestions about where to find them. Okay, the next thing I really love to craft with are champagne corks and wine corks. There's lots of different things you can do with these. And making our tassels, the paper tassels, and the fabric tassels that we did with these, those are among my all-time favorites. So, you can have a bottle of champagne and keep the cork, or have a bottle of wine and keep the cork, or if you don't drink any um, champagne or wine, you can ask friends. You can also purchase this kind of stuff at craft stores, and I have found big bags of, of these plain champagne corks at thrift stores. So. Those are another really great thing that I love to craft with. All right, let's talk next about burlap. I absolutely love this burlap ribbon. It's like, let's see, how wide is it? I think it's about five and a half inches. Yeah, it's five and a half inches wide. It comes in all different colors. In my closet, I have brown, I have orange, I have a blue color, I have a really funky green color. Um, for, for spring and summer, I love this creamy ivory color. And this comes from Walmart. This is what the tag looks like. Let's see if I can hold that still for you. It's like $4.88. Walmart. It's next to the flower arranging stuff and succulents and that kind of thing. It's not with your regular ribbon. And this is what we use to make those um, pulled string burlap flowers in all different kinds of styles. I'm just looking around here to see what I have, if I have anything that I can show you. I'm sort of in process of putting things away and getting new things out, but you cannot go wrong with this. There's tons of things that you can do with this. Also on the burlap front, I love these burlap placemats from Hobby Lobby. I have made so many different styles of placemats with these. They come already hemmed, already fringed. You just need to press them. They're great to work with. You can get a set of five for around four or five dollars. So they're perfect. These are back at Hobby Lobby in near the wood area, near t-shirts and um, aprons and pillows and things that you can, you can decorate. So these are two great burlap things to have. Okay, next up. Still kind of on the front of a fabric-y thing. I love this lace from Walmart. I don't believe they carry it anymore. If your store happens to have it, it may be on clearance. And if that's the case, grab as many as you can. Oh my gosh, this is my all-time favorite lace. Walmart, around four or five dollars. Okay, so if I can't have this, my next favorite is this lace, which is from Hobby Lobby. I hope I'm not going too fast, but you can, you can replay to watch all of this and take notes if there's something you were specifically looking for. This is stiff, it's wide, let's see. Gosh, it's six inches wide. It's from Hobby Lobby. I always buy ribbon from Hobby Lobby when it's 40% off, at least. This is with the wedding section stuff, and you get a big old roll of it for not much money at all. And this is what we used recently to make those hearts on the banners and hearts on the stuffed hearts and the stuff we did with um, sheet music. So this is great. I don't have the ticket or the tag for it anymore. Okay. Also, sort of along that same line, I talk about this product every single day. It's natural polished hemp. This is from Walmart. It's located in the jewelry section. I guess this is something that people use to make jewelry. What I love about this is it's smooth and it's polished 
and it's easy to get through holes in beads and banners. Um, this is about my third one of these. They're around four or five dollars. And it's just natural polished hemp from Walmart in the jewelry section. I would use that before I would use any other kind of uh, a hemp, uh, anything like that. I love that stuff. Okay, still in the fabric department, and I cannot find the label for this, darn it. This is the painter's drop cloth that I love the most. It is from Home Depot. And I've had lots of you guys tell me, I can't find it at my Home Depot. Well, you can always look online and see if you can order. You can order all different kinds of sizes, but the things about it that I wanna tell you are, this is Everbuilt, E-V-E-R-B-I-L-T brand. It's painter's drop cloth, it's medium duty. Um, it does not have plastic on the back. When you get this, it's going to be stiff as heck. And so I wash mine twice, on hot, dry it twice, on hot, usually with towels, and then fold it up promptly so it's not a big wrinkled mess. And I have made a ton of things with this. So it's from Home Depot. It's called Ever Built brand. It has a blue, dark blue label on it. It's painter's drop cloth. It's not expensive. You can buy whatever size you want. Um, they have like four or five different sizes. It does not have the plastic on the back of it. You do not want that stuff because you can't wash it to soften it. Okay, so um, I do have pictures of this, of the label for this. So I will dig those out and I will for sure put that in the comments, okay? Um, it's sort of an oatmeal color. It's really soft. The edges fray up beautifully. Um, it's just great. That is my favorite drop cloth. Okay, still in the fabric sort of department. I love jelly rolls. And jelly rolls, for those of you who don't do a lot of fabric things, I didn't before just recently. They come like this and they look like a jelly roll. Um, I This is something that somebody sent me last year because I was in the mad search for some navy blue and white jelly rolls. Um, and this one came from Joann's last year. You can also find them, you can find jelly rolls and fat quarters, which are just stacks of different size squares. They're, they're used by quilters. But you can find a good selection at Walmart right now, um, at my store anyways, they're all different, but you can also order jelly rolls online. I've seen them at Tuesday morning. Um, these are great for making bunting. Oh my gosh, there's just for making um, these ro roll rosette necklaces. Oh my gosh, there's just tons of different things that you can use those for. So look for jelly rolls in your color that you like. Um, I had some real pretty stuff last year, which I used almost all of it, that was a gray and a turquoise color. This is it. I made this necklace and I made a lot of other things with it. Let's see if I can get it down. Uh, and they have this this year at Walmart again. So jelly rolls. They're just long strips of fabric. They look, they come like this, so they look like a jelly roll. That's why they call them a jelly roll. And they are great. I know multiple people have sent me stuff. My friend Susie has sent me lots of different colors of just little pieces that she's picked up. Okay, moving on to decorative stuff. Okay, I love vintage buttons. And my vintage button, I love Mother of Pearl the most. And my selection is getting down to the stuff I don't really love. I also love these ones that are made out of carved bone. And I love the Mother of Pearl ones that are these dark gray. But, I'm just 
looking. Do I have any good mother of pearl? Um, if you are out at a garage sale or at a thrift shop and you see a bag of buttons, grab it. Because chances are there's some good ones in there. Okay, and this is just part of my collection. Then I also love some of these ones that are from the 40s and 50s and 60s. I don't know what these are even called. I do have a button book now that I just found. Um, you can find all kinds of interesting ones uh, in different colors. So, vintage buttons are great. If you have to, you can use new buttons. And they're just a little pricey. And they don't have the charm of something old. Oh my gosh, my favorite vintage buttons are the ones that still have the string that they were attached to the garment with. And um, a lot of you guys are my age, so you, you know that people used to clip. When a garment was not able to be worn anymore, people would salvage everything they possibly could, including the buttons. They would just cut them off and save them. And so lots of you very fortunate people inherited mason jars full of your grandmother's buttons. Uh, great-grandmother's buttons, things that had been clipped. I was not so fortunate, although my mom did give me a bunch. They weren't quite what um, some of you might have inherited. So those are awesome. And I'm just looking across here, and I see something that I didn't put in my pile. Dang, but I'm going to go grab it and show it to you very next. I don't know why I didn't think of this. I was, I've been all morning trying to think about what are my favorite craft supplies. So buttons, 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 buttons. Okay, so this was a sweet little box that was sent to me by my friend Dixie after I told her that I love crafting with vintage spools, these wood spools of thread. And um, a good friend of hers, that had since passed away, gave this to her, and she sent it to me, filled with um, different spools of thread, which I've used a ton of them. I used them to make some different kind of things, like these little flowers. Um, so, if you have a sewing room or a sewing bin, or your mom or your sister or your grandma does, um, and if they don't sew a lot anymore, go look and see what kind of old vintage wood spools of thread they have. Um, the best ones still have thread on them, in my opinion, and they mostly still have the old labels on them, but they're wonderful without it too. You can order wood spools, wood ribbon spools on Amazon, and they come in different sizes, and those are nice, but the real thing is just so much better, in my opinion. So, thank you, Dixie, for this. I just will always treasure this, and I think of you every time I see this. Uh, okay, moving on. Let's see what I want to tell you about next. Let's go to some utilitarian kind of things for a minute. Okay. <laughs> My husband has said so many times, I wish we owned stock in paper towels because I use a ton of these. I craft on them. I'm not fancy here. Um, I don't have fancy crafting supplies. I wish I, I'll tell you about something in just a minute that I really wish I had on hand that I need to pick up next time I go to Walmart. But I use a ton of paper towels and I use I craft off of paper plates all the time. And you know what, I save them. Let me show you. I say I am thrifty and frugal and all that, and I save them um, until they're so yucky, covered in glue strings or whatever that I can't use them anymore and then I throw them away. So, because I hate to waste, and I know that I don't want to cut down more trees than need to be cut down anyways. But this is a great crafting resource. Okay. Uh, 
I'm not gonna have very much fun when it comes time to put everything away. Okay, so let's go on to, um, let's talk about Mod Podge. This is my favorite Mod Podge. You can get it everywhere. I've purchased this at Hobby Lobby, at Walmart. I got a big bottle of it at Tuesday morning. The kind I like is Mod Podge Matte. Mod Podge is one of those um, types of glue that is a little bit more expensive than it really should be. I don't get it. Um, so if you don't want to purchase actual Mod Podge, you can Google and there are recipes on the internet to make your own Mod Podge out of school glue. But this is what I love. I love the matte. That's just my personal preference. You might like the glossy. They also have Mod Podge that is dishwasher safe. Let's see, do I have it up here? Here it is. But it takes about a month to cure. So Mod Podge is definitely on my list <clears throat> of my most favorite craft supplies. Okay, then this is something that I use all the time. You're probably thinking, what? Yep, it's just distilled water. And I have mine in a little spray bottle, although I just ordered a fancy new spray bottle from Magnolia. So let me know in the comments here or on YouTube if you want to know about that. But I use this for a lot of projects, like when I'm trying to create a watercolor look or when I'm working with either a chalk paste or a chalk art that has gotten kind of thick, it is super important that you use distilled water to thin your chalk products out. Because if you use regular water, you can grow mold. And I was actually just talking to somebody yesterday, I think it was Claudia, who was telling me that somebody gave her a bunch of old chalk paste. I don't know which company they were from, but they, they were, they had thickened a little bit, but they also had mold around the ring. And that is because the person who owned them before did not use distilled water. So this is like 99 cents. And I just have a bottle of this under the kitchen sink. And from time to time, I just refill my little bottles. Okay, are you guys bored yet? Um, should we keep going? Goodness, there's 370 people on. You want to know about the spray bottle? Oh, okay. Um, I will send you a link. It's just brand new. I've ordered it. I haven't received mine yet, but um, if anyone else wants to know about the new... I know there's an echo in here. It's because I don't have a carpet, and I'm not working with fabric right now, um, and I'm not a professional videographer. I'm my video man and the presenter at the same time, so I apologize about that. Okay, another thing that I love to craft with are embroidery hoops. You can get these in all different uh, sizes. You can get oval or circle. Um, I have found some gigantic ones at my Goodwill. At, at sewing stores, they can be kind of on the expensive side. So I really prefer to just pick these up at Walmart. Here we go. Um, and they're around $3 a piece. And you can use them together with something with canvas or drop cloth and create a sign or with lace. I mean, there's lots of different things that you could do. Or you can use each piece of it individually. So I love embroidery hoops. Um, all right, this is something I use all, all, all the time. And these are just these wood beads that I order on Amazon. Um, a lot of the craft stores have these and a couple things about them. They have really narrow holes, which make them hard to use. So um, I will put the information in the comments for this for sure, uh, because um, the place that I order these now, the beads have pretty decent size. Let's, let me find a good one holes in them, even the littler ones. Okay, and they're just neutral. You can color them 
or use some plain. Here's an example of one of the little um, wood thread spools that I ordered from Amazon. I'll put that information in the comments too. So I go through these like crazy, and you know what? If I make a project that I don't think I'm gonna use again, I take, I'm, I'm thrifty or whatever you wanna call that. I'll take it apart and put the beads back in my bag to be used again. Why not? Okay, um, this is kind of boring, but I'll tell you about this. And I really need a new one, desperately. This is my Sure Bonder Low Temperature Hot Glue Gun. Um, this uses uh, glue sticks that are called Cool Shot. This one is a mini and it has a cord, but that's okay with me. Um, I purchased mine at Hobby Lobby for around maybe $8 a while ago. And look, it's so cruddy. I am a messy crafter. I will admit it. But you can get these cool shot Sherbonder hot glue guns at Walmart. I'm sure you can get them at Michael's and Joann's. And I'm sure you can order this at Amazon. I don't know if they have one that has no cord that's rechargeable. I'm not sure about that. Um, I'm just living with the old fashioned cord and mine is a mini. I'm pretty sure they have a larger one. I like a low temperature glue gun because I always get it on my fingers. And this to me seems to be even a little bit lower than the actual low temperature hot glue. So. Love this. I would recommend this brand. And I, you know, all the stuff I've shown you, I don't make a penny off of any of that. I just want to um, share it with you all in one place so that, um, so that you can have this for reference. If you decide to do a project, you say, oh, I know there was a video Heidi did on DIY Dreaming or on her YouTube channel where she talked about all her favorite craft supplies. I'm just going to go watch that and I can get the information right there. So, love this. Okay, um, I use magnetic buttons all the time. Love these things. Oh my gosh, there's so many different things you can use with them. These, I believe, came from Walmart, but you can get these everywhere, including at your Dollar Tree, and they come in this size and a smaller size. Um, okay, but these come with a warning and it's an important one. And I was a, a criminal trial lawyer before I was a at home mommy, before I was a crafter, before I did DIY dreaming. So everything kind of goes back in my mind to all the legal schmeagle stuff. Um, these are super bad for little children and animals. And they kind of look like something yummy that you might want to eat. So, whenever you're using magnetic buttons, keep them up, keep track of where they are, and then put them away somewhere high so that you don't have the, the heartbreaking story of having to take your pet for emergency surgery or a little one to the hospital for emergency, emergency surgery also. So, that's my um, public service announcement for buttons. Okay, um, this is something I, these two things are something I use a lot. Krylon Matte Finish Clear Spray. You can use any brand, this is about empty, um, any brand of clear matte sealer. I use this on a lot of my wood projects before I stencil because it could be wood that has been painted or wood that has been stained, or even wood that is still in its natural raw state. Uh, wood has veins and grains and stuff in it, and when you stencil on a piece of wood that is a little fuzzy, even after it might have been stained or painted, it's gonna grab the medium that you put on your stencil, and it's gonna pull it in, and then it's gonna spread it out. And it looks like what I've got going on here, um, older lady lipstick lines. It can look kind of fuzzy and yucky. So to close all that down, to seal it so that can't happen, 
so your medium stays right on the surface of what you're stenciling. If it's wood, I like to use a matte finish, clear sealer spray. This one came from Walmart, but you can, there's lots of different brands. It does not have to be Krylon the brand. Okay, if I am, um, if it's raining outside and I don't feel like dealing with going out, because you have to spray this outside. Uh, I can't do that or I don't feel like it, then I will use a clear wax, a clear beeswax, and uh, something that looks like this. Okay, you can also use Minwax, which is a brand that you can get at Walmart even. You can get it at any Ace, Home Depot, Lowe's, any of those kind of things. You can get a clear Minwax or you can get a Minwax that's got like a natural tone to it. It's just completely up to you. And all you do with this is you just, I put, I put, I'm, uh, I want things to be done quickly. So I put it on a paper towel, which I know that probably isn't the best way. You should use like a lint free towel, but I'll just put it on a paper towel, put it on my surface, let it dry for a minute or so, buff it up and proceed right to stenciling. I don't wait for it to cure. Um, so. A sealer or a wax are good things to have. Um, all right, I have two more things to tell you and then we'll be done. And a ruler is not one of them. I'm not sure why this was sitting here <laughs> because I try not to measure or go crazy about that kind of stuff. I just wanna enjoy my crafting time. Hey, you guys, if you have questions along the way, feel free to ask them in the comments. Um, if you have questions about what I've shown already, this vi uh, video is in all of my videos, so you can go back at any time that you would like and rewatch it from the beginning to see all the other amazing stuff that I showed and to find out where things came from and about how much stuff costs. So um, if you have those kind of questions, just watch the video again, and um, I think I've gone through pretty much all the specifics. Okay, I love my punches. I have three of them. I have a star and I believe my star is, I think it's three and a half inches. Looks like this. This is what the underneath of it looks like. Great. I have, oh wait, I have another one too. Yeah, let me dig it out. I have this one that is like a scalloped edge. I have this heart, and let me grab the other one. Okay, where are you? Here it goes, it's hiding. This is the other one. It's like this little flower with petals. Okay, these all came from Hobby Lobby in their punches department. This is Hobby Lobby brand. So you can't get this specific one uh, on Amazon, I don't think, or anywhere else. Um, these are all roughly about three inches. They were around $14, but I never buy anything at full price at Hobby Lobby. So I got them kind of one at a time as I was going along for 50% off. So for around six, seven, eight dollars. And I use the heck out of them. These are great basics to have. Um, and I totally recommend them. Okay, and the very last thing are, and I'm sure there's other things I've forgotten, so if you can think of something that you know I love that I forgot, maybe I'll have to do a part two. But this was what I could think of this morning while I was thinking about this topic. I love these disposable tin, cookie baking sheets from Dollar Tree. You get two of them for $1. They're soft. You can make a ton of different things with them. I use them primarily with my punches. And they just add a lot to different projects. Let me show you a couple things. I'm just looking around. Yeah, I've used them for a ton of different things. Okay, so look at the back of this flower is this big scallop right here. And then the little petal on the front 
is this one. And then the other side is different, but same idea. I cut the leaves also out of the edges of it. Here's another one where I made the leaves and the inside part of the petal. And I've done a bazillion different things with it. So if your Dollar Tree does not carry these cookie sheets, this is something you can get at any grocery store. Um, they have disposable cookie sheets. The, the texture here might be slightly different and they're gonna be a little more expensive. But grab them. These are great crafting supplies. So that's pretty much everything I could think of this morning. I hope this was helpful to you guys, um, especially those of you that are new to crafting and, that, and you, you maybe don't have this gigantic closet full of stuff that I do. Oh, I wanted to tell you about tea towels also. Dang. I'll save that for part two because I know there will be more things that I've forgotten. Um, the tea towels I love, by the way, are from Walmart. There's two different brands, two different kinds of them. They're not with the actual dish towels. They're in the crafting department. And one of them is by the t-shirts on the wall where you can personalize your t-shirts. And the other one is next to embroidery hoops. Okay. Um, and I can't remember what those brands are. But um, anyways, I know lots of you guys are just starting. If you like my style um, and you want to recreate some of the things that I've done, Knowing all of these things might be helpful. Um, every, one, every single one of these things are super budget friendly because I'm super budget conscious. Um, and so anyways, if you want to see my projects coming up, if you want to be able to see Christ and Crafting on Sunday, do this, do this, say something in the comments, look up above and make sure that you have liked and followed DIY Dreaming. And then when I go live next time or when I post pictures, which I have a ton of amazing Pinterest pictures that I just have to get organized to share with you um, because I've not slept a lot lately and I like to just wander around Pinterest during the night when I can't sleep and save ideas to show you. But anyways, I'm off on a tangent. Um, if you want to be served pancakes or my projects, then do this, do this, say something in the comments, make sure you've liked and followed um, DIY Dreaming, feel free to sprinkle, all that kind of good stuff. Anyways, I, oh, you guys are so sweet. I love the kind remarks. You make me feel so encouraged. Um, and I really do hope that these tips are helpful. When I'm doing crafts, let me say one last thing and then I'll quit talking. It's a, and I'll get off. When I'm doing crafts here at DIY Dreaming, I don't want you to feel like you have to do my style. I want to just give you essentially a recipe, how to make something, like a banner. Um, but I want you just to know how to do that so that you can go and recreate all of that in your style, in your colors, to go in your decor, or if you're making it as a gift for your friend's style or colors or, you know, their choice. So um, anytime I'm using something like sheet music, just know that you can substitute. You could use a brown paper bag. You could use scrapbook paper. Um, you can take the ideas that I do here and make them completely your own. And that's really what I hope that you will do. Will do. Okie dokie. Thanks for watching. I, uh, if you have suggestions for other things that I've forgotten because I am definitely going to have to do a part two. Let me know that in the comments and um, I will see you guys later.